we're going to take a look at the law of sines in this first video for this unit. And it's another way of starting to solve for some of the missing pieces of these triangles when it's not necessarily a right triangle. You take a look down here uh, in these particular examples. We no longer have a right angle. So we can't use our sine, cosine, and tangent like we did before. So we need a different method in order to solve these. So what that's going to be is what's called the law of sines. And the reason it's called law of sines is because we use the sine function. So if we have this triangle on the sides A, B, and C, or angles A, B, and C, what we're going to end up doing is the side across from A, we're going to call that little a. The side across from B, we'll call that little b. And the side across from C, angle C, we'll call little c. And so what ends up happening is, just like we saw with trigonometry, there were ratios. There's still ratios with the law of sines. But if we do the side A divided by the sine of angle A, that's going to be equal to side B divided by the sine of angle B. And that also, let me clean that up just a little bit, that's also equal to the side C over the sine of angle C. So what we're going to actually be able to do is pick and choose which two pieces of this uh, setup we want. Uh, in order to do this, uh, or for it to make more sense, maybe we do an example. So find side AB. We're looking for that length right there. So let's just go ahead. We'll call that side X. So the way that this is going to work for us, X and the bottom part of this fraction is going to be the angle that's across from X. So that's 121, but we don't just put the angle. We need the sine of 121 degrees. And then the other piece that we have, we have 21 and angle 32 that go together. So basically, we're just going to take the side and the angle that's across from it and make a ratio. So in this particular case, it's 21. We're going to put the side on top. And then the sine of 32 degrees in the denominator. And it's at this point that we can go ahead, making sure that our, our calculator is in degree mode, right? because we're still dealing with degrees. Um, we can go ahead and turn this into x over 0.857, and then sine of 32. All I'm doing is just putting the sine of 32 and the sine of 121 into the calculator. We'll call that 0.53. And now in order to solve for x, all we need to do is go ahead and cross multiply. So I'll take my work over here. So now we got 0.53 times x equals, uh, gives you 0.857 times 21. And that is 17.997. And to solve that for x, we're going to divide by 0 0.53. Divide by 0 0.53. And so x here equals 33.96. So that side of the triangle, 33.96. If we look back at the other two sides of the triangle, right? 18 and, excuse me. 18 and 21, so 33 fits very, very well with those two. We'll do one more example for you in this particular video. So we got 75. We're trying to find the length of AC, which would be this side right here. So X and 75 degrees go really well together, right? Those are the two that are across from each other. So we'll do X over the sine of 75. Right? Remember, we're using the law of sines, so we'll use the function sine. And then the other one that we have access to very, very easily, we've got the 26 and the angle across from it, which is 64 degrees. So we'll do 26 over sine of 64. Just like before, the trig function and the angle are always going to go together. Right? And then at this point, we'll just go to the calculator. We'll turn sine of 75 into that decimal. Go ahead and grab that decimal. So we'll go x over 0.966 equals 26 and then sine of 64 is point, uh, 0.899, and I'm just using three decimal places just to be a little bit more exact as we go. So we'll go ahead and cross multiply these two things. Right, so now we've got point 0.899 times x equals point 0.966 times 26, which is 25.116. Divide both sides by point 0.899, and then that should put us at uh, yeah. x is going to be equal to 27.9. Uh, we'll do 27.94. Look back at the triangle. Let me erase all my markings before. Does 27.94, about 28, does it go well with these other two sides? 26, 19, 
and these haven't fit very, very well with it. On the off chance that maybe you're missing an angle, keep in mind that you can uh, fill in the missing angle. Like you look at number 3 here, find AB, so after that side right there, X. What we might want to do is figure out what angle A is. Uh, I will point this out to you. Uh, the 15 degrees is this particular angle right here. Right, that's with angle C. Now note that we, again, this is a pretty tight space, but we could actually figure out what angle A is as well using, you know, uh, 21 plus 15 is 36, and then 180 minus 36 is 144 degrees. So you can see angle A is 144 degrees. It's kind of a tough triangle, so what I might actually do, what I might recommend to you, maybe we draw it a little bit bigger so you can see what's happening a little bit easier. So this is 144 degrees, this is 21 degrees, this one's 15 degrees, and you got 41, 25, and X. So again, we can't use trigonometry because we don't have a right angle. However, we can use our law of sines to set up all these different ratios. So I'm going to give myself room to work. One that we definitely want, we want to keep X and 15. So we do X over the sine of 15 degrees. And that'll be equal to, since we have all three sides and all three angles, you can go ahead and pick which one you want to use. Um, I'll just use 41 over sine of 144. And so at this point, go to the calculator, do your work with it, um, and what you should end up with after you do all your work, 18.05, which again, look back at the triangle, 41, 25, 18, those numbers work well together. It's not an obscure number. That doesn't guarantee, but it's not so out of the ordinary that it would cause us concern.